JD, what, what do you hear from, from students who you talk to in these programs? Uh, what, what do you watch as they kind of go through the four years? And, and then how many of them do you hear back from once they go on to college and beyond? Yeah, we, um, we have a, a really nice um, alumni network, and we have some great examples of students who have been highly successful by using the Career Academy framework to, to connect. I think the real magic, the real brilliance in what Andy put together for NAF, you know, 40 years ago, is that this is a partnership. This is not waiting for schools to get their work done and then employers hire the people they want. This is an opportunity for employers and schools to work together with communities and inspire young people to engage more officially and formally in their education and also in their career planning. I can't tell you the number of young people who say they just, they had no idea of what it was like um, to work for a given company. And it's changed their aspirations. It's changed their viewpoint. And from the company's perspective, they have been thrilled at getting the future consumer's viewpoint into their work. And COVID has put us on its head. I mean, it's and we've been talking for 30 years about the importance of technology and how we need to do better well, COVID shut our schools down, and we I am very concerned that we have to lean in hard and fast right now to make sure that we do not lose the gains that we've made in education, and we need to amplify, get technology, get access and connectivity to every student, and part of that can be tied to internships. It can be done virtually. We're doing it now. Where where is that happening virtually now? Because that that's been another big question about coronavirus. That you know schools that that have the money were already set up and had their kids already had laptops and and, and schools right. that didn't have the same resources. Ready to go, right? Um, right, right. right. So, so what, what have you seen in, in the places? It's the you brilliance, work? right? It's the brilliance of Sandy's design of saying partnerships matter by bringing companies to the problem. Bring companies in, solve the problem, identify where there are gaps, bring companies in to help build the pipeline. And we have companies leaning in. We need more. We need more companies willing to say high school students matter in our long-term diversified pipeline strategies for the future. We're not going to wait till college students get the internships. We're going to start earlier, and we're going to make sure that we inspire them around our work, and we take advantage of the brilliance that they bring to the table. Hey, Sandy, I have, a, I have a management question for you, Sandy, based on a comment you had made earlier when you were talking about inequality and, and sort of the move towards stakeholder capitalism. I, I've talked to a number of CEOs throughout this pandemic who've said, look, we're realizing that maybe we can do more with less, meaning we may, maybe we don't need as many employees. Uh, we can be productive with less employees. And yet many of them have signed on to the business roundtable uh, pledge and the like. Uh, which puts employees on, I don't know if it puts it on par with shareholders and the like, but also, or other companies saying, do I cut my dividend or do I cut employees? And, and so the question I ask you is, what do you do in this type of environment on, on these type of thorny questions? Well, I, I think that a CEO of a company has, uh, as I said before, three real responsibilities. One is to their employees to have a, a safe uh, environment to work in and to do the right thing. The second is to a responsibility to their shareholders, because if they don't uh, do well in that regard, they're not going to be able to raise the monies in public markets that they're going to need to grow their company in the future. And third, they have a social responsibility that really hasn't worked as well as it should have, because a lot of CEOs turn it over to somebody else in the company at a, at a lower level, and they don't really lead it themselves. When I was the running Citigroup, we had over 200 interns every summer. And the places that those interns worked in our company, the morale in that division or in that office was much higher and the productivity was much better than any other place because the people felt that they were really doing something good to make, make their company better and, make, and feel better about themselves.